Over 2,000 years ago, this stark, sprawling ruin was probably the most important center for learning in the world. Here, men first figured out the size of the world and the number of stars in the sky. There were laboratories, gardens, a medical school, and over half a million books. The ancient library in Alexandria, Egypt, educated some of the most brilliant minds ever known. These corridors may hold the secrets of centuries of knowledge. The seeds of our present day culture were sown in these old gallery rooms in Alexandria. Perhaps the most surprising thing about the library at Alexandria is that it lasted for over six centuries. And yet, this may be all that remains. The founding of the library in Alexandria has been called the beginning of modern history. More than just a library, it was the first world research center. For hundreds of years, Alexandria invited dignitaries from around the world to study in its library halls. Resident scholars could live, eat, learn, and work with visitors who brought important new information to Alexandria. Apparently, all that is left of the legendary library is this modern excavation called the Serapeum, a secondary structure built when the original library began to overflow with books and people. The Serapeum exists only to tease us with a glimpse of the library's illustrious past. The amazing thing about the library at Alexandria is that it was the most important place of learning in the ancient world and we don't know where it was or where it is now. We don't know what it looked like. We don't know the details of what books did it have. We don't know everybody who was there. There's more that we don't know than we do know. Yet it was the most important event, perhaps, in the intellectual history of man. Over three million people live in present-day Alexandria, mostly followers of the Islamic faith. The old streets are crowded with shops and apartments built up alongside ancient ruins. 130 miles northwest of Cairo, Alexandria is Egypt's second largest city and home to her main port. In the fourth century BC, this fine open harbor and its island of Pharos attracted the illustrious conqueror, Alexander the Great. When Alexander founded the city in 332 BC, he chose it for location. The Mediterranean Sea, the island of Pharos, and proximity to the river Nile made for a good naval base. The natural harbor allowed easy access to all the nations in the fast-growing Mediterranean. Widespread trade and other civilizations were accessible. Alexandria was ideally suited to be the world's new center of thought, culture, and activity. As Alexander the Great looked out into the empty harbor, what did he envision as the future for the city that would bear his name? And why would the warrior Alexander even care about a library. Long before Alexander entered Egypt, generations of Greeks struggled with early riddles of existence. It was the beginning of man's understanding of the natural world. Investigation of everything was important. Athens, Greece became the brain power center of the old Greek world. Conversation and debate were common pastimes. Public speaking produced public scholars who became celebrities. In the fifth and fourth centuries BC, men like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle were working in Athens. They were the popular and controversial policy makers of the day. Their early teachings are the foundation for modern thought. 
But what did these early intellectuals have in common with one of history's finest generals, Alexander the Great? The tradition is that Alexander was taught by Aristotle. And Aristotle, of course, was taught by Plato, who in turn was taught by Socrates. Plato and Socrates believed that the senses mislead you, that if you can see it, you shouldn't really believe it. They believed in eternal, unchanging truths, which are known by the mind, not by the senses. Aristotle turned this around. Aristotle said, no, nothing enters the mind except through the senses. And he, in turn, taught Alexander the Great. Alexander was born to the ruler of Macedon, the most rapidly expanding state in the Greek world. Naturally, King Philip wanted the best tutor in the land for his royal son. So at age 13, Alexander, the soon-to-be great, was turned over to Aristotle of Macedonia. The philosopher filled the young warrior with a passionate love of learning. Educated men are as much superior to uneducated men as the living are to the dead. The fate of empires depends on the education of youth. Aristotle the philosopher, 4th century BC. Alexander valued knowledge as a tool for power. On his quest to conquer the world a decade later, Alexander carried Aristotle's copy of Homer's Iliad with him into battle. The warrior was also a poet. Working his massive Greek army across Asia to western India, the gifted young commander inspired admiration. His campaign to fend off Persian rule shot like a spear through the ancient world, winning Alexander the support of armies, kingdoms, and countries. In the fall of 332 BC, Alexander crossed into Egypt early in his world campaign. Egypt was then a Persian province. Egypt hailed Alexander as a liberator from Persian oppression. Welcomed as a ruler, Alexander was crowned Pharaoh of Egypt. For almost 3,000 years, Egypt had been ruled by godlike pharaohs. Those ancient pharaohs were the link between their mortal subjects and the gods themselves. Egyptian pharaohs were thought to be gods in life and after death. But Alexander was Greek, not Egyptian. He had no guarantee of an afterlife. Where would Alexander the Great find immortality? Deep into the desert at Siwa, Alexander sought the oracle of the Hidden One, the great Egyptian god Amun. Legend says Alexander had a mysterious secret. Was he the offspring not of mortal King Philip, but son of the god Amun himself? He went to Siwa and asked the oracle of god Amun if this was true. And in a dream, he saw that the god Amun embraced his mother. So this was an assurance, a confirmation of the claim. And then he asked his father, god Amun, uh, if he would require him to do anything. And the answer came also in a dream. King, I am god Amun speaking to you. Go and found an illustrious city at the site of the island Pharos. He immediately carried this out. In the dream, the god Amun embraced Alexander's mother, while in reality, Alexander embraced Egypt and founded Alexandria. <laughs> 